Now for our story. Sergeant Bill Mead strolled aimlessly down Wakefield's main street. Few people were about, for it was the hour when men sat reading papers in the lamplight after dinner, and women were putting their children to bed. Bill could see cheerful family groups as he walked past lighted windows. It made him feel all the more lonely. There was nowhere to go. The only person he really wanted to see, Peggy Douglas. Oh, but of course, that was out of the question. And Kit, his wife, only because of a misunderstanding with Peggy, was in California, waiting for the birth of a baby. A baby who might not escape a tragic heritage. Why hadn't Kit's father told them in time? But even if it weren't for that factor, Bill reflected bitterly. Their personal situation surely didn't warrant their having a child. Walking around the courthouse square, Bill noticed a sign in the Calvert Real Estate and Loan Office. A sign that read, Closed. He thought of Ben Calvert, his father-in-law. Of how he'd been misled by him. Now he knew Ben to be a ruthless, unscrupulous man. A man who would even risk his daughter's happiness in order to strike back to her at the people he hated. Now, in a way, I feel sorry for Kit. What she's had to go through because of her father. She's been the victim of his inferiority complex all her life. Yeah, that's it. He tried to prove through Kit that a Calvert can always get what he wants. Oh, I'd like to prove him wrong on that score. But somehow, in spite of all our troubles, I, I can't help but admire Kit's strength. Her understanding. She realizes we can't go on the way we were, I'm sure of that. If only she hadn't made me promise to keep my mouth shut until after the baby's born. If I could only explain things now to Peggy. The longer I wait, the tougher it'll be for her to understand. The further away she'll... But I suppose I've already waited too long. There may never be any going back. As he came to the corner drugstore, Bill Mead stopped for a moment. He stood there aimlessly at the door. Though he was looking straight at her, he didn't see the young girl who nodded to him. A moment later, she got off the stool at the counter and walked over to him. Hello there, Bill. Can't you make up your mind? What? Oh, uh, hello. You look as if you were struggling with some weighty decision. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I don't think you remember me. I'm Jane Plummer, remember? Oh, of course, Jane. Uh, how have you been? Fine. Well, uh, can I buy you a Coke? Thanks, Bill. I just finished one. What have you been doing with yourself lately? Oh, nothing much. Same old grind. I thought I saw you last night out on Willow Road. Yeah, yeah, you probably did. I go that way to and from camp. I see. Uh, have you seen Aunt Mary lately? Mm-hmm. I saw her this morning. How is she? Just fine. But, of course, busy as usual. <laughs> Jane, I wonder if I could talk to you for a minute. Why, certainly, Bill. Go right ahead. Oh, well, I, I'd rather not talk here. Oh? Well, where do you want to go? Well, maybe we could go over and sit in the park, okay? All right, sure. Oh, gee, it's a nice night. Mm-hmm. Look at that moon through the trees. Yeah, I hadn't noticed. Um, I see Ben Calvert's office still has the sign-up. They've been closed several days. There's a joke going around that he... Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. I forgot Ben Calvert's your father-in-law. Yeah. But it's all right. You can't forget about that as far as I'm concerned. I see. But apparently you don't forget about it, Bill. Well, there's a lot of things I'd like to forget. Let's sit down here, Auntie. Okay. Jane, you and Peggy are pretty good friends, aren't you? Yes, we are. Why? Well, tell me, is... Is Peggy happy? I'm sorry, Bill. I'm afraid I can't answer that question. After all, Peggy is my best friend, and under the circumstances, I don't feel free to discuss her with you. Yeah, I see what you mean. Frankly, Bill, since you said you wanted to talk to me, I might as well tell you I don't understand your attitude with Peggy. I admit I don't know you awfully well, but I've always thought you were an honest, straightforward sort of person. It's hard for me to believe talking to you, but you do the things you've done. Yeah, 
They look pretty bad to an outsider, I guess. Not only to an outsider, Jerry. Honestly, when I think of the things you put Peggy through, I just can't believe it. I know. I know what I put her through. Look, this may sound pretty funny to you, but all I ever wanted was to make Peggy happy. And yet everything I've done has just made her all the more miserable. Well, if it's any comfort to you, I'm not so sure that she's miserable anymore. Because of that Nicholas Dorn, the writer? Does it to me? Jane, tell me about them, will you? I, I've got to know what's happening to Peggy. No. No, Bill, I'd rather not. Yes. Yeah. Well, will you just tell me this much, then? Has Peggy told you anything about, well, about what happened to us, Peggy and me? Oh, dear. Bill, I wish you wouldn't ask me, Please, but Jane. I... Please, Well, yes, Bill, she has. But does she really believe that I was dishonest with her? That I was trying to back out? Yes, frankly, she does. What else could she think? But, Jane, it's not true. Oh, I know how it must look. And worst of all, there are certain reasons why why I can't explain. Why I can't tell Peggy how I feel or, or anything. You believe me, don't you? Suppose I do believe that you're telling the truth, Bill. What good would it do? It's Peggy you've got to convince. Yeah, I know. And I've tried, but she won't listen. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. Why well, I should expect you to understand. I'd like to, Bill. But, well, after all, I'm Peggy's friend, so naturally I see things from her side. I'm sure you do. Frankly, though, I don't see what you expect of her. You think I have a right to expect anything of her, don't you? I'm married. That says it all, doesn't it? Bill, I don't think you have any right to expect Peggy to keep on waiting for you. After all, but you are married. I don't expect anything from Peggy. Well, there is one thing. If she'd only believe that I'd been honest with her, that I wouldn't do anything to hurt her. If only she'd... Well, but I guess under the circumstances, there's nothing I can do about that. No, I suppose not. Jane, will you do this much for me? Will you give her a message? It depends on the message. Well, will you tell her that in spite of the way things look, that even though I may have destroyed every chance I ever had with her, that just the same I've honestly met every word I've said to her? Yes. I'll tell her that. And tell her that someday, before too long, I'm going to prove it to her. What you mean, Bill, is that you're still determined to go through with your plans. Plans to divorce Kit. But that's exactly the thing Ben Calvert is fighting against. That's the fear that has taken him to California in an effort to see that nothing Kit does will result in discrediting the Calvert name in Wakefield. The same fear which made Ben demand his daughter's address from Jesse Ward as a wedding present. An address that he knew Mrs. Calvert was none too eager to give him. Tonight at a beach colony outside of Los Angeles, a cab pulls up in the driving rain. As Ben and Jesse hurry to reach the comparative shelter of the porch, Jesse feels a sense of panic. <laughs> Just like Ben to insist on my coming along. He wants to humiliate me. Now, of course, he's bound to find out that I didn't tell him the truth. That I didn't see Kit when I was out here. Well, that won't matter now that I'm Mrs. Ben Calvert. And the Mrs. in front of my name is going to be more than an empty title. I'm not going to play second fiddle to Kit. No. No matter what happens tonight. I've got to keep Kit from returning to Wakefield. I've got to. As the doorbell echoed from within the house, Jesse's heart pounded with excitement. Yes, and fear. What would Kit say to the marriage? How long could she keep Ben from finding out that she'd lied? when she said she'd seen Kit on her last trip, that Kit had announced she was getting a divorce. These thoughts raced through her head as she stood there waiting beside Ben. So much depends on how clever she can be this evening. And then, 
Chesley heard the sound of someone approaching. A moment later, the door was opened. 